Want to learn how to play the guitar as fast as possible in almost like a cheating way? Stay tuned, that's coming next. What's going on YouTube? This is JT Techie and today we are learning my personal quick and dirty version on how to learn guitar really fast. So how we achieve this is simply by cutting out all of the so-called boring guitar theory. Now don't get me wrong, guitar theory is incredibly important in your path in learning guitar, but for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of just being able to pick up a guitar and being able to pick any song and play it for your friends or for your loved ones, um, that is the main goal here. So my suggestion to you is follow this course, learn how to play the guitar, and at a later date, go back and learn the guitar theory as much as you can. And if you guys are new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We upload lots of great guitar-related content regularly. For the agenda today, we are going to be looking at the guitar, the different parts of the guitar, how to hold the guitar, your posture, and we're going to look at how to strum and how to fret the guitar, and also how to play your first chord. After that, we're going to look at the different string numbers and the string names followed by how to tune your guitar, and then we're going to look at uh, proper finger placement for uh, the fretboard, and then how to play a bar chord, and then we're gonna be looking at a capo, what it is and how to use it, and then followed by the next steps after you complete this course. Getting started and holding the guitar. So basically, take the guitar and rest it onto your right thigh, like so. Okay. You could either uh, tippy-toe a bit with your right foot so that it elevates your leg. Alternatively, you can also cross your leg so that it lifts the guitar up. Right? I personally like to raise um, my foot by tippy-toeing and it really depends on how long your legs are and how high your seat is. So in this case, I'm just going to uh, elevate my right leg a little bit. Okay? Make sure your guitar is parallel to the floor and hold it naturally. Okay, so by that I mean put your left hand around the neck of the guitar and your thumb is going to be behind the neck and you can start pressing on some strings like so. Okay, now with your right arm, just put it over the body of the guitar and you can try to strum. So you can use a pick or you can just use your fingers. I like to just make my finger look like that, right? Okay, and just... <laughs> strum like so. You want to make sure that your posture is uh, correct by sitting up straight. You don't want to be slouching down like this. Right? So just kind of sit up straight, parallel to the floor for your guitar, and hold your neck of the guitar naturally. Right? Hold it firmly yet loosely at the same time. <laughs> So now that we've got the guitar in hand, let's identify some of the key components of the guitar so that you know what I'm referring to when I talk about the guitar parts uh, at some later point, okay? So we've got the guitar body here, and then we've got the sound hole, which is right here. This is where the sound is projected out of the guitar. We've got the guitar neck, and we've got the fret board here, right? This is fret one, fret two, fret three, fret four, so on and so forth. Uh, at the end, we have a head stock, okay? And then we've got the guitar nut, which is this white piece here. This is basically fret zero, okay? And then um, on the head stock, we've got the tuning pegs. This is how you tune your strings, okay? By turning these. Now let's go over how to strum the guitar. And you can either do this with a guitar pick like so or with your bare hand. Uh, I often like to just use my bare hands and I'll take my index finger and my thumb and put them together like this and just strum that way. And you just strum right over the sound hole, right? So you're strumming the strings, okay? The other thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to keep your elbow where it is, keep it stationary, right? You're not throwing your elbow around, right? Just keep it rested on the body of the guitar. And you want to keep your arm, your forearm, and your wrist very loose, right? Um, you don't want to be too tense while strumming. So you can give that a try. It's all in the wrist, like most uh, sports or uh, musical instruments. So you just... And that's all there is to it, right? 
Okay, so let's learn how to play a chord, okay? So uh, really important, this is the fretboard, and this is fret 1, fret 2, fret 3, fret 4, fret 5, and it just goes on up to uh, all the frets, okay? And um, your fingers, okay, um, oftentimes the index finger is called finger 1, finger 2, finger 3, and finger 4, right? And the string numbers, this is string 1, starting from the bottom, string 1, string 2, string 3, string 4, string 5, and string 6, okay? So, uh, let's try the G chord. So first start by taking your index finger and placing it onto the 2nd fret, 2nd, uh, sorry, 5th string, like so, okay? And then your uh, middle finger will go onto the 3rd fret, 6th string, like so. And then your ring finger, you can put it onto the 3rd fret, 1st string. And then you're going to strum all 6 strings. And it'll sound like this. Okay, that's the G chord. So give that a try. Remember to keep your wrist really loose, right? Your wrist is just going up and down in an up and down motion, okay? Make sure it's very loose. That's the most important thing. Okay, so as discussed earlier, the names of the strings uh, are often numbered. So starting from the bottom and going up, it's string 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? These are actually notes, like musical notes uh, for each string. So uh, the easy way to remember it is um, if we count from the top down, okay? So the first string is E, the next one is A, the next is D, and the next is G, and then the next one is B, and then the next one is E. So the easy way to remember this is it spells out eat all day, get big easy. And if any of you have taken a musical course when you were back in primary school or even in high school, you'd probably be aware of this already, okay? So that's the, the two bass notes, E, A, and then we've got D, G, B, and E, okay? Eat all day, get big, easy. The easiest way nowadays to tune your guitar is with the help of modern technology. So if you've got a smartphone, you pretty much have a guitar tuner to go. The app that I use is called Guitar Tuna, Tuna like the fish, and it's available on Android and for iOS, iPhones, and basically you, uh, for me, I like to tune it to standard tuning, and that is, uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, eat all day, get big easy, and uh, you just take the smartphone app and you pluck each string, and it's going to tell you if your uh, string is too high or too low, and you just have to tune your guitar with the tuning pegs uh, until the app will show you that uh, it's the correct note, and it's going to make a bling sound, and the app looks like this, okay? So just as an example, I'll pluck one string. You notice the bling there, that's an E. There's an A, it's... See? So it tells you that you got the note right when it makes the bling sound. So back to the G chord example, where do you want to place your fingers uh, on the actual string? So your index finger would go onto the 5th string of the 2nd fret, and notice that you want to place your finger either right in the middle of the fret or closer to the next fret which is just scooting your finger over like so, without actually going on or over the fret bar, right? So again, uh, index finger on the fifth string of the second fret, your middle finger on the third fret, sixth string, and your ring finger on the first string of the third fret, like so. And notice that for the most part, my fingers are very close to the actual fret bar right here. You don't want to be all the way over here to play a G chord, right? Because you may have some fret buzz that way. You want to always put it either right in the middle of the fret or a little bit closer to the next fret, closer to the fret bar, like so. Okay, so what are bar chords? Um, in the path of learning guitar, you will most definitely run into bar chords. And what that basically means is that um, you are going to be barring one of the frets in order to play the chord. So let's look 
at the F major chord as an example, okay? So this one, you're taking your first finger or your index finger and you are going to bar the entire first fret like so, okay? And then your middle finger is going to go on to the second fret, third string, uh, your ring finger will be on the third fret, fifth string, and your pinky will be on the third fret, fourth string, and then you strum all six strings, okay? So this is a bar chord because again, you are barring one of the frets, okay? Okay, so another thing that you're going to encounter when learning how to play guitar is uh, capo, okay? So a capo is essentially uh, like a clamp, right? It clamps down on your strings and it effectively raises the pitch of every note. Okay, so I, as an example, in a sheet music or in one of my tutorial videos of songs, I'm going to ask you to, uh, for example, place your capo on capo 2. Okay? So when you see or hear capo 2, it basically means to take your capo and apply it to the second fret. Okay? Capo 2, second fret. As another example, if you are asked to put it on uh, capo 5, then you just take your clamp, your capo, and apply it to uh, the fifth fret, okay? Fret one, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth fret right here, bam, okay? And then you just tighten it, okay? Okay, I'm gonna play the same chord, the G chord, on the fifth fret and it'll sound like this. Okay, whereas with no capo, it's a G chord is going to sound like this. You notice the difference, okay? Uh, I strongly suggest you buy a capo. Uh, a lot of people will try to get away with not, you know, using a capo, and they only look for songs to play that have no capo. Honestly, a capo of this kind, it's just a really inexpensive one, it's less than $5. You may as well just get one. Alright, so that should be enough for you to get by with the guitar, and enough for you to learn so that you can follow along with my guitar tutorials. Uh, which are in the description below, okay? Also, if there are any specific guitar chords that you're looking to learn, you'll probably find them in my library of how to play chords in the description below as well. So always remember, um, try to practice playing guitar every single day, even if you can only get in maybe 10, 15 minutes every day to just practice some songs, that's gonna be golden. Now that you've completed this guitar course, the next step for you to take is to check out the playlist that I put together for you. It's in the description below. It's basically a list of songs that get a little bit more challenging one after the other. So go ahead, take a look at those and start learning. Please remember to like and subscribe. Find me on social media at JT Techie. That's Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and I'll see you guys there. Take care.